I have a Minolta W Rocker SG 28mm 3.5 lens here that I'm going to be disassembling. This lens is one of the wide angle rockers, so um, it's a little bit harder to disassemble than some of the, the normal or longer length uh, focal length lenses that Minolta offers. I'm going to be disassembling this down to get mo access to most of the components on their own. And there's, uh, there's a few limitations. I, I wasn't able to dis disassemble it all the way, but I was able to get most of it uh, taken apart to clean all the glass, clean the aperture blades, and clean the individual body sections. To start off with, uh, we're just going to go in from the back of the lens, get access to the back of the aperture blades. You can see that on this particular lens, the back uh, lens group is quite small compared to the, the front group, which is very flat as well on the the lens. So on this back group, it just unscrews with a spanning wrench. There are two divots on the outermost ring here and here that take off the entire back section. So I'm just going to use the, uh, the spanning wrench to undo this back section. You can really see that when I lift that out, it's quite small uh, compared to some of these other lenses. Uh, so now you have access to the aperture blades on their own. You can see when I hit the stop down lever here, and then you can open it up and close. Um, and you can also notice here on this lens that the diaphragm and the aperture entire assembly is really small. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I would not recommend that you would disassemble it down to take out the individual blades because it's really hard to put back together. But you can clean these very carefully with a, a Q-tip or something, go in and use a tiny amount of oil to try to clean these. And from this point to continue the disassembly, we have to go in from the front of the lens so we can actually take the entire diaphragm aperture assembly out of the lens and get it on its own so that you could clean both sides of it. So I'm just going to put on the back lens cap here so I can flip it over. So looking at the lens from the front, you can see that there's the nameplate going around here and then there are two little holes over here and here, which you could actually use to take off just the nameplate. But what I found is easier on this lens is you have this metal ring here that goes in and out when you focus in and out. Um, and you can actually just unscrew this entire thing. So you grab the, the metal ring and undo that. And it takes out the nameplate along with this metal ring. And that's just a lot more convenient. Um, the nameplate on this one, uh, you can easily undo it here, but the nameplate on this one uses these two little holes. Um, over the one here and one there. So you need a different type of spanning wrench, one with the pointed tips instead of the, the slotted tips to actually undo it on its own. So now with the uh, just the lens, all the front of the lens exposed, you can see that you have the main lens group, front lens group up here, and then the focus ring down there. And so we're just gonna take out the entire front lens group. It's quite large and there are two holes for spanning wrenches, there's two rings. There's this inner ring here that's right next to the lens, and then there's this outer black ring that has two slots right there and there. And you want to go on the outer one to undo just the entire group together instead of taking off the front lens element on its own, uh, and then having to take off the rest of them and put that back together later. So I'm just going to undo that with the spanning wrench. And then you can see Lift that out. It's quite a, a large piece of glass compared to the tiny little back section here. So set that aside. And now to just lift out the aperture diaphragm assembly, I'm going to undo these three screws here, here, and here. And they have a little washer too that helps lock this uh, the, the diaphragm assembly together and down in place. So I'm just going to undo these three. Now if I go in from the back of the lens, I should just be able to push this gently out. You can see there's a black section back there. And push that inside out and the entire diaphragm assembly just lifts right out. Now when I set that down, this is assembled, the diaphragm is assembled pretty much the same way as with the 55 millimeter lenses, but it's so much smaller 
that I would not recommend taking this apart at all. You can just, if it's really, really uh, gunked up and you need to clean it off, you could almost submerge this whole thing in some sort of cleaning solution and then very carefully clean it off and put it through multiple baths. But actually taking this apart with these li little tiny blades and then putting it back together would be very, very difficult. I'm just going to set that aside. Now we have the just all the mechanical parts of the lens on their own. You can see the focusing ring out here. And for this lens, a lot of it has to be taken apart going in through the front. And that's really the only way I've found to take off a lot of these elements. And unfortunately, you do have to take off the focusing ring um, to go any further. And that could require you to go back outside and focus it back correctly to infinity. And the way the focusing ring attaches, there are three screws here, here, and here. And you can see that I'm missing one at the moment, but that's just how the lens came. But I'm going to undo this focusing ring, and that'll take off this black, with the little grippy section, that black ring on the outside. Oh, and I should just mention, too, that the, the screws attaching the focusing ring, they have a tiny little washer that goes with them as well. So oftentimes those will be stuck together, but... Um, if they come apart, you need to make sure you have the little washer. So the next step is going to be taking the helicoils and the focusing assembly out to get access to the back section, which is actually what is coupling the aperture control ring and the stop-down lever to the aperture. So if there was some other problem, when I first got this lens, there was a lot of friction in it, um, and that was actually caused by the mechanical parts in this back section. You can kind of get a peek in right there. So to get access to those, I'm going to take off this um, this focusing ring. To do that, this brass section just um, screws into place and this uh, silver section, which actually moves up and down, is um, going to come out as well when I undo this. So I'm just going to unscrew the brass section. Okay. Now you can see I have those two groups separate. So if there's real like rough focusing or something, you can take these apart more by you undo this metal bar here to take these two sections of the focusing apart. And then you can look at all the different threads and clean those out and then apply some lubricant to try to get the focusing to be a little smoother. I'm just gonna set this part aside. Now continuing on with the disassembly, what we have access to here is all the internal um, things that are coupling the stop-down lever and the aperture control ring to the aperture and the, to actually control it on this little piece here. So it's this guy. So where, what happens on this, there's a tiny lever over here and that's what actually is controlling the aperture and that goes right into this part right here. So it has a little slot that that goes into. When we move the focusing ring back and forth, that just moves back and forth. And when we hit the stop down lever, that opens it up all the way. So next I'm gonna flip this lens over and start disassembling the back section. What I'm trying to do here is just take off all these individual external rings. And I wasn't able to quite get down so you can take off all of these and clean them individually, but I was able to get most of them off um, on their own. So first, there's this back metal plate, which just has three screws there, there, and there. Um, and that just is a little protective thing that keeps dust and other debris from going in between where the lens, back lens group sits and where the mounting plate is. I'm going to undo these three. And next, there's this silver uh, ring on the back that sits next to the camera body. And I'm going to take this off. Um, and to do this, there are three little tiny uh, set screws going around it. And one, two, three. And to actually get, into the, get to these, um, 
I had to sort of file down a screwdriver a little bit when even this very small uh, flathead screwdriver so that it would actually fit in and be able to undo these. And what I'm trying to do here is just loosen these up a little bit and not take them out completely because once you take them out, um, they're very hard to get back into place. So I'm just going to loosen these up. Now this should just lift right off and keep those screws in place. And the last body section I want to remove is the aperture control ring. So it's going around here, goes back and forth. And to actually remove this, there are two pieces that are holding it in place. There's this silver lever that's actually sitting on top of it. So I'm going to move this over. Um, you can see that it's on top of it. There's also this metal bar down here. And what this bar actually does is it sets, it um, provides the curve for the aperture settings. Let me flip this over. You can see this is the other side of that metal bar. And then when I move the uh, aperture control ring back and forth, this little peg here moves along this curve and it gets pushed in and out based on its position in the curve to actually control the aperture, which is be in here. So that gets pushed back and forth from, uh, I think that's fully closed to fully open. And in this case, so both of those components actually have to come out to take off this um, aperture control ring. Uh, I'll start by taking out the uh, the um, this little metal thing here. So this one is put in place with just a, a flathead screw, but it also has this piece of wire that provides um, a springiness, so it goes back to its own position. Um, and that piece of wire is looped around this side of the little bar that goes back and forth and then there's another part pushing up against this wall here. So when you undo this, that piece of wire can probably just remain attached fully. That'd be what we hope for. Or it may come loose. Um, and we can hopefully just take out this entire thing together. I'm going to focus all the way to maximum aperture, yeah. And then manually push this here over a little should just be able to lift that out on the inside. Okay, and you can see the little tiny wire um, going around the two sides of it and the post here that we unscrewed. I'm gonna just set that whole thing over to the side. Next for this metal plate, there are just the two screws on the bottom here. And when we undo these, well, they don't um, fit perfectly in place. So one of the things we have to do when we reassemble this is to um, play around with this a little bit to get the aperture to be at the right setting um, when the aperture control ring is at so when it's at like fully open that it the aperture is fully open so I'm going to undo these two uh, two screws here next this little bar should just slide out it's easier if I go and push this uh, metal section in here out a little to just slide right Ouch. There we go. So the way I was going in there, it was like this over to the side. I'm just going to set that aside. Now this ring here on the bottom should be completely loose, the aperture control ring. And the only thing about this is that there's a tiny ball bearing, um, as usual, in where the uh, the clicking sound comes from, over on this side near the numbers. So when I'm taking this out, it's, I'm just going to carefully try to undo this and keep the ball bearing from rolling away, which it usually does. All right, so you can see the little tiny ball bearing. And the difference on this lens versus the other ones that I've taken apart is that this ball bearing actually rests on the aperture ring. It's a more sturdy aperture ring, and there's a little spot right here where the ball bearing rests. So I'm going to set that aside. Um, usually it's resting on the uh, on here and then the aperture ring has the grooves, but in this case it's reversed. So as a, a final step, I'm going to take out this metal ring here and that has the grooves for where the, the whole focusing mechanism slides into it. Um, and I'll explain why, but I wasn't able to get any further with the deconstruction of this lens after that point. So what's attaching this metal section in place are these three screws going around here, here, and here on the uh, ring with the depth of field scale and everything. I'm undo these.
And that sh should just now lift right out. It's a little tight. There we go. So you can clean. It seems like there's a lot of oil on this one, um, but you can clean individually down in here. And you also have a little better access to all the mechanical workings going on in here. So this is where I, I stopped the disassembly. Um, and unfortunately, I wanted to take off this last ring here from the lens mount. I wanted to get the, uh, the section with all the numbers and everything separate so you could clean that individually. But I wasn't able to find a way to do that. Um, what you can do though is you could carefully clean this externally, but you just don't want to mess up any of these internal uh, little springs and things in here. Uh, it seems to be that there are four screws going around here that would actually couple this to the lens mount. But because of this bar, I wasn't able to find any way to get access to all of them. And I wasn't able to find how to remove this bar either. So now I'm going to start the reassembly of the lens. And it's uh, a little more complex because there are a few things that can go wrong. And have, you have the aperture focusing incorrectly at the various settings. Um, but it's not too bad overall. We just have to reverse most of the steps in this case. Um, and I'm going to start by putting back together and getting the aperture ring on since getting it in with a little ball bearing can be a little bit difficult. And so what has to happen for this aperture ring is that it slots over this ring here on the back and the side with the little post on it goes out. So it goes like this. And then in this, this ring there's a tiny little spot for the ball bearing. Right down there. And then that presses the ball bearing against these grooves on the main lens body. So it's a little bit harder than on some of the other lenses to get back on because this ring is much stiffer as well. But what I've found is you can kind of just force it in there and it should uh, it should, um, if you, uh, you can kind of just force the aperture ring over and then once you get it in the relative right spot, you can slide it over to the ball bearings. So I'm going to put the ball bearing in this, uh, this spot here where it can sit in the aperture ring. And now you, using the main lens body, I'm going to try to get, have these facing down and place this over that ball bearing and then try to slide this entire thing on top. Okay, so on that first try, I lost the uh, ball bearing, so I'm gonna have to retry. Okay, you can see I kind of had to muscle it over to get it so it clicks and it's resting in this, the right place. But now it's set and we want to lock that down right away to prevent this from coming out and having to deal with that ball bearing again. So next I'm going to put in this little lever again. Uh, so that, remember, it's stuck out of the lens. Let me find where that spot is. So it's stuck out of the lens right there, and on the inside of the lens it just moved back and forth with this bar, but it also has this little wire. And what I want to do in this case is take this wire, um, so this side goes down into the lens, and I want to take this wire so that I have the longer side bent over to the right of this bar, so going like that. Now I'm just going to take this and get it roughly into position. I'm going to push that forward a little and then move that, get that in position. Okay. Now with that in place, I'm going to tighten down the slotted screw at the top. Worry about the bar and, uh, and the, the little spring in a second. Okay, so that's good. And what has to happen for this little spring with the two sides of it 
both should be accessible. You can barely see it. There's a longer side over here, and that's in the correct spot. It needs to be resting against this wall. And the shorter side has to go on this side of the bar. So using like a little screwdriver or something, uh, you don't want to bend it too much, but you're going to take this little uh, shorter side and bend it onto the other side of this bar. Okay, that's uh, almost. Let's loosen this up a little. Okay, now I'm going to tighten it back down. And what you want to look for is that that springs back and forth automatically and it's not too tight so that the, this can still move freely and if it is you might have to bend this slightly up this bar and sticking out here or put some lubricant there so that this is not causing any problems so there we go and next i'm just going to put in this little bar here remember it controls the aperture setting providing the curve for this post here to slide along um, and that also has to go through the aperture control ring. It sticks out and there's a, a large section here. Let's see if I can focus that. Um, there's a large section here with these two side going out here. And then the way this goes in, you want to have the part with the little knob um, on this side. And then, so it goes like this. And I'm going to push forward this bar to get it in the right spot and then slide it through to the other side of that aperture control ring. Now I have it on this side, and you'll notice that the place where this attaches, there aren't definite screw holes, um, and this is one of the, the areas where you can actually adjust how the aperture is getting controlled. Let me just move this so it goes over the two screws. So by moving this back and forth, or um, up and down, you can actually control uh, how the aperture is controlled by moving that curve slightly. Uh, and I'll just going to put in these two screws and then I can show that. So I'm going to put them in, in a, just any spot for now. So then later what you can do is if you find that the aperture is not opening up properly when you move this ring back and forth, you can go in, loosen these up slightly and push the bar in or out. And what that will do is push this curve in or out so that this metal uh, peg hits it at a, a different spot and actually correctly focuses or um, correctly controls the aperture. So right now it looks like it might be a little off, um, but I'm going to leave it like that and then maybe readjust it later. And to finish up with the, the back section, uh, I'm going to put back on this silver mounting uh, ring that sits against the camera. Uh, and there are there is this one little indentation on it, and that's what actually goes over this metal control, metal, metal lever. And then for these screws, there are the three of them going around here, they actually rest in these little pockets on the lens body. Um, so I'm just going to get it in roughly where I think it goes. And using this screwdriver, I'm going to start one of these. And once it's touching the, let me undo that again. So once it's kind of touching the body of the lens, I should be able to find where it actually goes into that, that uh, little indentation on the lens body. Uh, and all three should do that. And how you would know if they're not in that indentation is that when you tighten these down um, fully, the, the metal ring here would actually be uh, sticking out from this back section, from the mounting plate. So I'm going to leave off this metal back piece for now and focus on, uh, it makes putting back the aperture and diaphragm control a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to focus on starting back and putting together the lens starting from the front. So let me put on the, uh, the lens cap here so it's flat. If you remember, there's this metal ring here that sits on first, so it goes there. And then this um, helicoil slots into this metal ring. So to start with this metal ring, uh, in my case, there's this little 
section here that has um, it has a uh, set or flathead screw and two little lines that somebody drew on there. And where that um, goes is up towards the front of the lens. And then there are also these three on this bottom section here. There, there are three screw holes that need to get lined up with the ones on the body. So let me get this. Just put that down. And now with these three tiny black screws, I'm going to reattach this to the body. So slide this around until that. Okay. And next we have to get this helicoils and this whole focusing assembly back into here. And um, the way that this has to work, you'll see on this, on the helicoils, there's this bar here. And that, it's on the intersection, so that the section that actually moves up and down, when I go like this, or um, if, if you hold this stationary, the, uh, that would be locked into here. So there's a little indentation there that has to get locked into. But then this silver or brass section um, around the edge also has to get screwed into place on here, on these rings in here. And the way I'm, I found is best to try to accomplish this is that you have this set so that the um, metal bar at the bottom is as far in as possible against these coils. And then start attaching that and go as far as possible with this until you can't tighten that down anymore. Then loosen it enough to get the metal bar into the slot here. And that seems to be a general way to get it to the right focus position so you don't have to re-zero it. But if you're wanting to have a, a more accurate focusing you can probably go outside and, and re-zero it back at infinity. So I'm just going to start this up at Okay, so got that started. I'm just going to tighten that down. You can see the metal bar going around on the inside there. Just keep tightening this tightening this down till should be a point. Yeah, so right here I can't tighten that down any further. You can see the metal bar is running against that edge and that's what's preventing it from tightening. So I'm going to loosen it up just enough to get that metal bar where it needs to be. And now it's in front of that slot. And what I want to try to do is to rotate the, um, the brass section here but keep the silver section stationary so the metal bar goes into that slot. So it's a little bit tricky but... Okay, so that seems to be what generally works best. Now you can see if I move this up and down, it focuses in and out. What I'm going to do next is put the aperture and the whole diaphragm assembly back into the lens. And on this, having this back section exposed, you can see there's this little holder thing here, um, and on the diaphragm assembly there's a little post that actually, when you move it back and forth, it opens and closes the aperture. And when I thread this in through the front, that post has to go into that hole. So I'm just going to start set this in and position it so it goes like that. Push that down all the way. Now I'm going to put on the back lens cap again. There are three screws going around with their little washers and everything that uh, lock this down into place. I'm just going to put those in. And I'm not tightening, the, tightening these down fully yet. Um, I'll show you why in a second. I'm just going to get them started and then uh, have them still loose in here. Okay, so I uh, loosen these up so that it's just loosen this up. Okay. So you can see now that even though this is set to being, there's not a lot of movement on anything after the first two or three clicks. So it goes from fully open to all the way closed in two or three little f-stops. And that's not what we want. 
Um, so to actually get this to the right position, there are two things that we could adjust. There's that metal bar on the back that had the curve for the aperture control, but we can also in here spin this around slightly so that when it's set to fully open, it actually is fully open. And oftentimes it's a little easier to have it set to 16 or something and then find this first spot where it just starts to open up go down from there. So I'm going to try to now tighten one of these down and go in and try see not great still. So I'm going to loosen this up again. I'm just going to just a little bit more Okay, so in this case, I think this section is good. Now you can see that when this is fully open and I move it, there should be movement at all the different clicks, at all the different f-stops, which there generally is. And this, this is a little bit rough on the, uh, goes a little bit past, but that's also how I found the lens originally. So I'm gonna just tighten this down a little bit more on the back. Okay, so the next step is to put the focusing ring back in place. And this is what actually locks, so it, it's what controls what you move when you're focusing the lens, and it locks to the inner part here, or to this brass section here, and moves the front lens group up and down. So it goes up and down. Um, and on this ring with the grippy section and all the depth of field scale and everything, there is this one cutout section which goes toward kind of over here. And that should be the only spot where you can, it sets the limits of how far in and out you can focus. And this is what you'd actually have to adjust if you um, need to focus it back to infinity. In my case, before taking apart the lens, I marked um, generally where one of the screws went. So here, just I made two little marks right there where around one of the screws. But if you didn't do something like that, you need to take it outside and then focus this correctly to infinity with the metal ring here loose and then um, lock it so that it's, when it's focused to infinity, it's correctly, or when it's set at infinity, it's correctly focused at infinity. So now I'm going to just tighten down this three screws going around here. As I said before, I'm missing one of the screws. So I only have two. And they have the little washers as well that need to go on them. So what I'm doing here is that with these two screws partially in place, I can use a screwdriver to move the inner brass ring um, uh, without moving the outer ring. And when I have this set focused to infinity, I would go outside, screw in the front piece, front glass, back glass, um, and but still have this section exposed, so not put on the nameplate or anything, and move this intersection around independently until it's correctly focused at infinity. Uh, and in this case, what I'm going to do is kind of just guess for the reassembly right now, um, and that looks... I have the marks in there to guide generally where it should be, but really I should go outside after I, I put this together and focus it back at infinity. We'll say that's that's good for now though. And next, the front glass piece. I'm gonna let me put on the lens cap again. So this front glass piece, big front glass piece, just screws into place and then locks down with a spanning wrench. And the taking apart the nameplate here, I'm going to get this started because it's a little bit easier. This makes it a little bit easier. And this just screws back in this whole um, ring here, just screws back in place around the top of here. So there we go.
And then I'm going to lock this down again with the spanning wrench once I get it in the right spot. I've gotten it there, and now it's as tight as it can go, and I'm going to use the spanning wrench in these two holes here to lock it down the rest of the way. Okay. Finally, for the back of the lens, to put in this back lens group that just screws into place. And lock it down with the spanning wrench, the two outermost grooves. And this back plate has now has to go on. You can see that there's two sides and one's more finished than the other. And that's the side that actually goes out. Um, and this is just protecting debris and other things from getting into the lens here. So it, it just goes like this and then locks down with the three little screws going around. All right, so now if I go in, I can test it. Um, see that aperture opens up correctly, closes correctly. Um, stop down lever does as it's supposed to as well. So, and everything seems to be working properly again. As I mentioned, I wasn't able to disassemble the lens all the way down to get all these rings off, but um, what I showed should be enough to fix most mechanical problems and clean the, the optics internally or the aperture blades specifically if they're oily. Um, and in many cases, that should be enough for, for uh, most people. Overall, it's not too difficult to take apart, uh, although there are some more annoying design aspects that do make it more difficult than some of the like the 55 millimeter lenses.